Question 48 of Summa Theologica, Pars Prima, Trinity and Creation. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. This recording is by Jim Ruddy. Summa Theologica, Pars Prima, Trinity and Creation by St. Thomas Aquinas. Translated by the Fathers of the English Dominican Province. Question 48. The distinction of things in particular. We must now consider the distinction of things in particular, and firstly the distinction of good and evil, and then the distinction of the spiritual and corporeal creatures. Concerning the first, we inquire into evil and its cause. Concerning evil, six points are to be considered. Whether evil is a nature, whether evil is found in things, whether good is the subject of evil, whether evil totally corrupts good, the division of evil into pain and fault, and whether pain or fault has more the nature of evil. First article, whether evil is a nature. Objection 1. It would seem that evil is a nature, for every genus is a nature. But evil is a genus, for the philosopher says that good and evil are not in a genus, but are genera of other things. Therefore, evil is a nature. Objection to further, every difference which constitutes a species is a nature, but evil is a difference constituting a species of morality. For a bad habit differs in species from a good habit, as liberality from illiberality. Therefore, evil signifies a nature. Objection 3. Further, each extreme of two contraries is a nature, but evil and good are not opposed as privation and habit, but as contraries, as the philosopher shows, by the fact that between good and evil there is a medium, and from evil there can be a return to good. Therefore, evil signifies a nature. Objection 4. Further, what is not, acts not, but evil acts, for it corrupts good. Therefore, evil is a being and a nature. And objection 5. Further, nothing belongs to the perfection of the universe except what is a being and a nature. But evil belongs to the perfection of the universe of things. For Augustine says that the admirable beauty of the universe is made up of all things, in which even what is called evil, well ordered and in its place, is the eminent con commendation of what is good. Therefore, evil is a nature. On the contrary, Dionysius says, evil is neither a being nor a good. I answer that one opposite is known through the other, as darkness is known through light. Hence also what evil is must be known from the nature of good. Now we have said above that good is everything appetible, and thus, since every nature desires its own being and its own perfection, it must be said also that the being and the perfection of any nature is good. Hence it cannot be that evil signifies being or any form or nature. Therefore it must be that by the name of evil is signified the absence of good. And this is what is meant by saying that evil is neither a being nor a good. For since being as such is good, the absence of one implies the absence of the other. Reply to Objection 1. Aristotle speaks there according to the opinion of Pythagoreans who thought that evil was a kind of nature, and therefore they asserted the existence of the genus of good and evil. For Aristotle, especially in his logical works, brings forward examples that in his time were probable in the opinion of some philosophers. Or it may be said that, as the philosopher says, the first kind of contrariety is habit and privation as being verified in all contraries, since one contrary is always imperfect in relation to another, as black in relation to white, and bitter in relation to sweet. And in this way good and evil are said to be genera, not simply, but in regard to contraries, because as every form has the nature of good, so every privation as such has the nature of evil. Reply to Objection 2. Good and evil are not constitutive differences except in morals which receive their species from the end, which is the object of the will, the source of all morality. And because good has the nature of an end, therefore good and evil are specific differences in moral things, good in itself, but evil as the absence of the due end. Yet neither does the absence of the due end by itself constitute a moral species, except as it is joined to the undue end. 
just as we do not find the privation of the substantial form in natural things unless it is joined to another form thus therefore the evil which is a constitutive difference in morals is a certain good joined to the privation of another good as the end proposed by the intemperate man is not the privation of the good of reason but the delight of sense without the order of reason hence evil is not a constitutive difference as such but by reason of the good that is annexed reply to objection three this appears from the above for the philosopher speaks there of good and evil in morality because in that respect between good and evil there is a medium as good is considered as something rightly ordered and evil as a thing not only out of right order but also as injurious to another hence the philosopher says that a prodigal man is foolish but not evil and from this evil in morality there may be a return to good but not from any sort of evil for from blindness there is no return to sight although blindness is an evil reply to objection four a thing is said to act in a threefold sense in one way formally as when we say that whiteness makes white and in that sense evil considered even as a privation is said to corrupt good forasmuch as it is itself a corruption or privation of good in another sense a thing is said to act effectively as when a painter makes a wall white thirdly it is said in the sense of the final cause as the end is said to effect by moving the efficient cause but in these two ways evil does not effect anything of itself that is as a privation but by virtue of the good annexed to it for every action comes from some form and everything which is desired as an end is a perfection and therefore as dionysius says evil does not act nor is it desired except by virtue of some good joined to it while of itself it is nothing definite and beside the scope of our will and intention reply to objection five as was said above the parts of the universe are ordered to each other according as one acts on the other and according as one is the end and exemplar of the other but as was said above this can only happen to evil as joined to some good hence evil neither belongs to the perfection of the universe nor does it come under the order of the same except accidentally that is by reason of some good joined to it second article whether evil is found in things objection one it would seem that evil is not found in things for whatever is found in things is either something or a privation of something that is a not being but dionysius says that evil is distant from existence and even more distant from non-existence therefore evil is not at all found in things objection to further being and thing are convertible if therefore evil is a being in things it follows that evil is a thing which is contrary to what has been said and objection three further the white unmixed with black is the most white as the philosopher says therefore also the good unmixed with evil is the greater good but god makes always what is best much more than nature does therefore in things made by god there is no evil on the contrary on the above assumptions all prohibitions and penalties would cease for they exist only for evils i answer that as was said above the perfection of the universe requires that there should be inequality in things so that every grade of goodness may be realized now one grade of goodness is that of the good which cannot fail another grade of goodness is that of the good which can fail in goodness and this grade is to be found in existence itself for some things there are which cannot lose their existence as incorruptible things while some there are which can lose it as things corruptible as therefore the perfection of the universe requires that there should be not only beings incorruptible but also corruptible beings so the perfection of the universe requires that there should be some which can fail in goodness and thence it follows that sometimes they do fail now it is in this that evil consists namely in the fact that a thing fails in goodness hence it is clear that evil is found in things as corruption also is found for corruption is itself an evil reply to objection one evil is distant both from simple being and from simple not being because it is neither a habit nor a pure negation but a privation reply to objection two as the philosopher says being is twofold 
in one way it is considered as signifying the entity of a thing as divisible by the ten predicaments and in that sense it is convertible with the thing and thus no privation is a being and neither therefore is evil a being in another sense being conveys the truth of a proposition which unites together subject and attribute by a copula notified by this word is and in this sense being is what answers to the question does it exist and thus we speak of blindness as being in the eye or of any other privation in this way even evil can be called a being through ignorance of this distinction some considering that things may be evil or that evil is said to be in things believed that evil was a positive thing in itself reply to objection three god and nature and any other agent make what is best in the whole but not what is best in every single part except in order to the whole as was said above and the whole itself which is the universe of creatures is all the better and more perfect if some things in it can fail in goodness and do sometimes fail god not preventing this this happens firstly because it belongs to providence not to destroy but to save nature as dionysius says but it belongs to nature that what may fail should sometimes fail secondly because as augustine says god is so powerful that he can even make good out of evil hence many good things would be taken away if god permitted no evil to exist for fire would not be generated if air was not corrupted nor would the life of a lion be preserved unless the ass were killed neither would avenging justice nor the patience of a sufferer be praised if there were no injustice third article whether evil is in good as in its subject objection one it would seem that evil is not in good as its subject for good is something that exists but dionysius says that evil does not exist nor is it in that which exists therefore evil is not in good as its subject objection two further evil is not a being whereas good is a being but non-being does not require being as its subject therefore neither does evil require good as its subject objection three further one contrary is not the subject of another but good and evil are contraries therefore evil is not in good as in its subject and objection four further the subject of whiteness is called white therefore also the subject of evil is evil if therefore evil is in good as in its subject it follows that good is evil against what is said woe to you who call evil good and good evil on the contrary augustine says that evil exists only in good i answer that as was said above evil imports the absence of good but not every absence of good is evil for absence of good can be taken in a privative and in a negative sense absence of good taken negatively is not evil otherwise it would follow that what does not exist is evil and also that everything would be evil through not having the good belonging to something else for instance a man would be evil who had not the swiftness of the roe or the strength of a lion but the absence of good taken in a privative sense is an evil as for instance the privation of sight is called blindness now the subject of privation and of form is one and the same namely being in potentiality whether it be being in absolute potentiality as primary matter which is the subject of the substantial form and of privation of the opposite form or whether it be being in relative potentiality and absolute actuality as in the case of a transparent body which is the subject both of darkness and light it is however manifest that the form which makes a thing actual is a perfection and a good and thus every actual being is a good and likewise every potential being as such is a good as having a relation to good for as it has being in potentiality so it has goodness in potentiality therefore the subject of evil is good reply to objection one dionysius means that evil is not in existing things as a part or as a natural property of any existing thing reply to objection two not being understood negatively does not require a subject but privation is negation in a subject as the philosopher says and such not being is an evil reply to objection three evil is not in the good opposed to it as in its subject but in some other good 
for the subject of blindness is not sight but animal yet it appears as augustine says that the rule of dialectics here fails where it is laid down that contraries cannot exist together but this is to be taken as referring to good and evil in general but not in reference to any particular good and evil for white and black sweet and bitter and the like contraries are only considered as contraries in a special sense because they exist in some determinate genus whereas good enters into every genus hence one good can coexist with the privation of another good reply to objection for the prophet invokes woe to those who say that good as such is evil but this does not follow from what is said above as is clear from the explanation given fourth article whether evil corrupts the whole good objection one it would seem that evil corrupts the whole good for one contrary is wholly corrupted by another but good and evil are contraries therefore evil corrupts the whole good objection two further augustine says that evil hurts inasmuch as it takes away good but good is all of a piece and uniform therefore it is wholly taken away by evil objection three further evil as long as it lasts hurts and takes away good but that from which something is always being removed is at some time consumed unless it is infinite which cannot be said of any created good therefore evil wholly consumes good on the contrary augustine says that evil cannot wholly consume good i answer that evil cannot wholly consume good to prove this we must consider that good is threefold one kind of good is wholly destroyed by evil and this is the good opposed to evil as light is wholly destroyed by darkness and sight by blindness another kind of good is neither wholly destroyed nor diminished by evil and that is the good which is the subject of evil for by darkness the substance of the air is not injured and there is also a kind of good which is diminished by evil but is not wholly taken away and this good is the aptitude of a subject to some actuality the diminution however of this kind of good is not to be considered by way of subtraction as diminution in quantity but rather by way of remission as diminution in qualities and forms the remission likewise of this habitude is to be taken as contrary to its intensity for this kind of aptitude receives its intensity by the dispositions whereby the matter is prepared for actuality which the more they are multiplied in the subject the more it is fitted to receive its perfection and form and on the contrary it receives its remission by contrary dispositions which the more they are multiplied in the matter and the more they are intensified the more is the potentiality remitted as regards the actuality therefore if contrary dispositions cannot be multiplied and intensified to infinity but only to a certain limit neither is the aforesaid aptitude diminished or remitted infinitely as appears in the active and passive qualities of the elements for coldness and humidity whereby the aptitude of matter to the form of fire is diminished or remitted cannot be infinitely multiplied but if the contrary dispositions can be infinitely multiplied the aforesaid aptitude is also infinitely diminished or remitted yet nevertheless it is not wholly taken away because its root always remains which is the substance of the subject thus if opaque bodies were interposed to infinity between the sun and the air the aptitude of the air to light would be infinitely diminished but still it would never be wholly removed while the air remained which in its very nature is transparent likewise addition in sin can be made to infinitude whereby the aptitude of the soul to grace is more and more lessened and these sins indeed are like obstacles interposed between us and god according to isaiah our sins have divided between us and god yet the aforesaid aptitude of the soul is not wholly taken away for it belongs to its very nature reply to objection one the good which is opposed to evil is wholly taken away but other goods are not wholly removed as said above reply to objection two the aforesaid aptitude is a medium between subject and act hence where it touches act it is diminished by evil but where it touches the subject it remains as it was therefore although good is like to itself yet on account of its relation to different things it is not wholly but only partially taken away reply to objection three 
some imagining that the diminution of this kind of good is like the diminution of quantity said that just as the continuous is infinitely divisible if the division be made in an ever same proportion for instance half of half or a third of third so it is in the present case but this explanation does not avail here for when in a division we keep the same proportion we continue to subtract less and less for half of half is less than half of the whole but a second sin does not necessarily diminish the above-mentioned aptitude less than a preceding sin, but perchance either equally or more. Therefore it must be said that although this aptitude is a finite thing, yet it may be so diminished infinitely, not per se, but accidentally, according as the contrary dispositions are also increased infinitely, as explained above. Fifth article, whether evil is adequately divided into pain and fault objection one it would seem that evil is not adequately divided into pain and fault for every defect is a kind of evil but in all creatures there is the defect of not being able to preserve their own existence which nevertheless is neither a pain nor a fault therefore evil is inadequately divided into pain and fault objection two further in irrational creatures there is neither fault nor pain but nevertheless they have corruption and defect which are evils therefore not every evil is a pain or a fault objection three further temptation is an evil but it is not a fault for temptation which involves no consent is not a sin but an occasion for the exercise of virtue as is said in a gloss on corinthians nor is it a pain because temptation precedes the fault and the pain follows afterwards therefore evil is not sufficiently divided into pain and fault and objection four on the contrary it would seem that this division is superfluous for as augustine says a thing is evil because it hurts but whatever hurts is penal therefore every evil comes under pain i answer that evil as was said above is the privation of good which chiefly and of itself consists in perfection and act act however is twofold first and second the first act is the form and integrity of a thing the second act is its operation therefore evil also is twofold in one way it occurs by the subtraction of the form or any of any part required for the integrity of the thing as blindness is an evil as also it is an evil to be wanting in any member of the body in another way evil exists by the withdrawal of the due operation either because it does not exist or because it has not its due mode and order but because good in itself is the object of the will evil which is the privation of good is found in a special way in rational creatures which have a will therefore the evil which comes from the withdrawal of the form and integrity of the thing has the nature of a pain and especially so on the supposition that all things are subject to divine providence and justice as was shown above for it is of the very nature of a pain to be against the will but the evil which consists in the subtraction of the due operation in voluntary things has the nature of a fault for this is imputed to any one as a fault to fail as regards perfect action of which he is master by the will therefore every evil in voluntary things is to be looked upon as a pain or a fault reply to objection one because evil is the privation of good and not a mere negation as was said above therefore not every defect of good is an evil but the defect of the good which is na naturally due for the want of sight is not an evil in a stone but it is an evil in an animal since it is against the nature of a stone to see so likewise it is against the nature of a creature to be preserved in existence by itself because existence and conservation come from one and the same source hence this kind of defect is not an evil as regards a creature reply to objection to pain and fault do not divide evil absolutely considered but evil that is found in voluntary things reply to objection three temptation as importing provocation to evil is always an evil of fault in the tempter but in the one tempted it is not properly speaking a fault unless through the temptation some change is wrought in the one who is tempted for thus is the action of the agent in the patient and if the tempted is changed to evil by the tempter he falls into fault 
Reply to Objection 4. In answer to the opposite argument, it must be said that the very nature of pain includes the idea of injury to the agent in himself, whereas the idea of fault includes the idea of injury to the agent in his operation, and thus both are contained in evil as including the idea of injury. Sixth article, whether pain has the nature of evil more than fault has. Objection 1. It would seem that pain has more of evil than fault. For fault is to pain what merit is to reward, but reward has more good than merit as its end. Therefore pain has more evil in it than fault has. Objection 2. Further, that is the greater evil which is opposed to the greater good. But pain, as was said above, is opposed to the good of the agent, while fault is opposed to the good of the action. Therefore, since the agent is better than the action, it seems that pain is worse than fault. And objection 3. Further, the privation of the end is a pain consisting in forfeiting the vision of God, whereas the evil of fault is privation of the order to the end. Therefore, pain is a greater evil than fault. On the contrary, a wise workman chooses a less evil in order to prevent a greater, as a surgeon cuts off a limb to save the whole body. But divine wisdom inflicts pain to prevent fault. Therefore fault is a greater evil than pain. I answer that fault has the nature of evil more than pain has, not only more than pain of sense consisting in the privation of corporeal goods, which kind of pain appeals to most men, but also more than any kind of pain, thus taking pain in its most general meaning so as to include privation of grace or glory. There is a twofold reason for this. The first is that one becomes evil by the evil of fault, but not by the evil of pain, as Dionysius says. To be punished is not an evil, but it is an evil to be made worthy of punishment. And this because since good absolutely considered consists in act and not in potentiality, and the ultimate act is operation or the use of something possessed, it follows that the absolute good of man consists in good operation or the good use of something possessed. Now we use all things by the act of the will. Hence from a good will which makes a man use well what he has, man is called good, and from a bad will he is called bad. For a man who has a bad will can use ill even the good he has, as when a grammarian of his own will speaks incorrectly. Therefore, because the fault itself consists in the disordered act of the will, and the pain consists in the privation of something used by the will, fault has more of evil in it than pain has. The second reason can be taken from the fact that God is the author of the evil of pain, but not of the evil of fault. And this is because the evil of pain takes away the creature's good, which may be either something created, as sight, destroyed by blindness, or something uncreated, as by being deprived of the vision of God, the creature forfeits its uncreated good. But the evil of fault is properly opposed to uncreated good, for it is opposed to the fulfillment of the divine will and to divine love, whereby the divine good is loved for itself and not only as shared by the creature. Therefore it is plain that fault has more evil in it than pain has. Reply to Objection 1. Although fault results in pain as merit in reward, yet fault is not intended on account of the pain as merit is for the reward, but rather on the contrary pain is brought about so that the fault may be avoided, and thus fault is worse than pain. Reply to Objection 2. The order of action which is destroyed by fault is the more perfect good of the agent, since it is the second perfection than the good taken away by pain, which is the first perfection. Reply to Objection 3. Pain and fault are not to be compared as end and order to the end, because one may be deprived of both of these in some way, both by fault and by pain. By pain, according as a man is removed from the end and from the order to the end, by fault, inasmuch as this privation belongs to the action which is not ordered to its due end. The end of question 48.